welcome to On the Porch. I'm Jane Garibay and I'm state representative for half of Windsor and all of Windsor Locks. I'm excited to be here today with Dr. Kathy Muller. Um, Kathy has an uh, incredible resume, but most um, that hits me the most and that I've known her is that she is the medical director for the Center for Integrative Medicine in St. Francis Hospital. And right now during the COVID um, pandemic, she's seen patients at St. Francis in the fever respiratory infection clinic to help those who can't see their doctors. Um, and I'll let her explain more about that. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Jane, thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Um, so can you tell people what is integrative medicine? I mean, I have an idea because I've known you for quite a few years. Mm -hmm. Um, but what is integrative medicine and how does that work with regular medicine? So integrative medicine is the combination of Western medicine, regular Western medicine, and complementary and alternative medicine for which there's good science. And so integrative is a better word, we think, than complementary, because complementary means, oh, you do all this and then maybe you add some of the other stuff right. on top. And alternative means you choose one or the other. And we really feel like good medicine is just good medicine. And there are a lot of things that are good medicine that are complementary and alternative and good medicine that are traditional Western medicine. So we like to, we meld the two. And how do you become an integrative um, doctor? I mean, you had your degree in medicine. Yep. Um, how did you go about getting that? Because I understand there's very few integrative medicine doctors across the United States. There are, there, there are a bunch of different ways you can do it. So my path was a, a pretty traditional one. I'm a family physician, board certified in family medicine, practiced in Windsor for the majority of my career in private practice, but always had an interest in um, other ways to help people heal rather than the standard tools that we have in Western medicine, which are prescriptions and surgeries and all that. And so I started just the curiosity part at the very beginning of my career and then began studying um, hypnosis actually as a resident mm -hmm. and acupuncture as a, a, an attending later on, which is a senior physician later on. Mm -hmm. And then in 2010, I did a two year fellowship with Andrew Weil at the University of Arizona in integrative medicine to be able to pull all of my skills and all of my tools together. Um, I think that's you know wonderful. And I've been the recipient of hypnosis and acupuncture. Um, and um, everything isn't for everybody. Correct. You find what helps you, which is really good. So how does um, your medical background in both integrative and um, reg general medicine help you right now with what you're doing with the virus, the COVID? So I think, so COVID is like nothing any of us has ever seen before. Mm -hmm. And what we know is that there aren't a whole lot of Western medical treatments for COVID, right? So you get COVID, it's usually upper respiratory, but it can go into the lower lungs and it can cause significant respiratory distress and pneumonia. So our baseline of health directly impacts how we respond to COVID-19 infection. That doesn't mean that everybody who's healthy doesn't get a serious infection, but I think the, the more strong our foundation is, the less likely we are to succumb and need ventilator support or be in the intensive care unit. So I think um, what we all need to be doing is taking really good care of ourselves mm -hmm. because a huge percentage of us are going to get this virus, a huge percentage, unfortunately. Right. Well, and one of the things I found, because you know me, even um, after other medical challenges that I had earlier in the year, last year, um, I keep going. And I will tell you that this, this virus landed me. I still sleep a lot, even though it's weeks out. Yep. And I finally learned, finally after 64 years, that I just need to let my body rest and heal itself. So I'm yep. trying to drink... Um, uh, what do you call it, the, um, like the Gatorade, mine's not Gatorade, but those type of drinks trying to replenish my body, making sure I'm taking my vitamins and sleeping when my body says I yes. want to rest. Yeah. And it's not so hard when we're home, so. 
Yeah, you know? well, it, still though, it's maddening, right? So uh, for a vital, healthy person who's going all the time, it's really hard to say, holy cow, I can't make it through the day without a nap. But that's what I'm finding with a lot of the COVID-19 infected patients that I'm working with right now is they can't believe it. This is killing them. I've heard, I didn't mean literally, this is, this is sidelining them. Let's use appropriate words. Um, they, people are exhausted. They have no appetite. They can't smell a lot of stuff. They just feel lousy and it's bowling them over. It really is. Someone, a number of patients have described to me that this illness just hurts. It does. Um, and um, it is one of the complications that is pretty unique to this virus is the lack of taste. Mm -hmm. Not only it the is. lack of taste, there's like a different taste in your mouth yep. and everything tastes like cardboard. I think I yep. went 13 days and of course, you know, you do lose weight, but it's not the right kind of weight. Um, I was just reading, force yourself to eat something, make sure you're drinking the liquids, et cetera. Yeah. 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 And I think, you know, we use our, I'm using my integrative medicine principles. So we look, we look at food, we look at movement, we look at mind, body medicine, and we look at supplements. And so food is obvious. If we right. do not bring in good food, then we cannot expect our bodies to heal us from anything. From sugars and all those snacky foods that we want to eat because we're closed in, right? Exactly, exactly. It's a challenge, but that's sometimes where the movement comes in, right? So we have the ability to get outside more than we would. You can safely go outside. Now, would I start you know, rollerblading if you've never rollerbladed before? I don't think so, because we want to <laughs> avoid injury, right? Going to the emergency room, but we can safely go out and walk and run and, um, you know, get out in our wonderful town, respectfully, yeah. keeping respectful distances, right. obviously. And as the governor said, have your mask. If you come across people, yes. just flip it on and, um, you know, continue. Yes, yep, I um, completely agree. So yeah, it is hard and you get fearful. Am I gonna need a nap the rest of my life? Do you know yeah. <laughs> my type of personality? It's like, oh God, you know, but um, you have to stop pushing through it and just let your body heal. Yeah, I completely agree. So you're in the, um, the Fever Upper Respiratory Infection Clinic for St. Francis. What yep. is that? So um, in Singapore and South Korea, when they had this, this COVID epidemic, they tried to find ways to help people who were sick get face-to-face -face medical care, but also keep it safe. So for example, when I was in private practice, if we had people who were COVID-19 infected coming in with my fragile elderly patients would be right. a terrible combination. And so as a service, to our community, St. Francis has opened two what we call Fury Clinics. In Singapore, they call them fever clinics. Mm -hmm. And they're specifically geared to see those patients who have cough, who have fever, and who could have COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, we are, um, the, the clinic is arranged so that people don't just walk in. You have to have an appointment. Mm -hmm. We actually meet people at their cars we have them put a mask on and we escort them in because we don't want anybody with potential right. COVID-19 coming in contact with any um, vulnerable populations. They come in, we put them in a room. I'm actually in one of the rooms right now. We put them in the room, we close the door. We need to keep this isolated. Mm -hmm. And then I have um, plenty, thank goodness, of PPE to keep me and the, the two other members of our team that safe. Awesome. Yeah, we're really, we're really okay, but we're also being compulsive, really compulsive and really careful. And we're also escorting patients back out to their cars so that they don't come in contact with anybody. But right. I, I think it's a wonderful service and I'm really it is. happy to do it. Go, or, I mean, you have to have an appointment, but do you need a doctor's nope. referral? No, okay. you do not. You do not need a doctor's referral. You can make, you obviously have to have an appointment. Right. Um, I like to work in combination with primary care docs. I don't want to take the place of your doctor, but right. if your doctor can't see you in the clinic and somebody needs to listen to your lungs or see if you're right. wheezing or see if you have strep or whatever, I'm, I'm happy to do that because I can do that safely. Right. And I'm amazed at how many people don't have a regular doctor. I agree. I mean, it's not, you know, huge, but it's enough that it's a concern for those people to be able to be um, seen. And different doctors have different um, criteria for right. seeing you or different. Right. Um, so it's good to know that you can, um, what would they, where would they go or what would they do? Is that the 211? 
So um, you can get some of the information from 211, but I can give you the number. So the number to the Fury Clinic at St. Francis is mm -hmm. 860-714-4450. And there's another one located in um, our Farmington Family Medicine offices. I don't have that number right off my no. the head, but, but I can get it to you, Jane, um, after. Oh, right. And we can put it out. Yeah. So you um, just call them and they're very careful. They screen. They give you all the information that you need. Um, but, and my job is, is to get back with your regular doctor and make sure they know what's going on too. Right. I think that's really important. In the loop. Right. Yep. And they're being overburdened right now too. I'm sure with so many calls and so much going on. It's, you know, it's a huge transition for all of us. I mean, look how we're having this meeting. You and I would have probably sat on your front porch, you know, <laughs> a couple right. of months ago. And now we have to do it like this. This is a whole new world for all of us. Right. And it's um, harder for some of us than others. I like meeting people face to face. This is a good alternative because I can see you, I can talk to you. Um, I meet with constituents face to face. I like, you know, that. So it's adjusting to newer times and I think it's gonna become more prevalent. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I also know people sending pictures to their doctors of what's going on with them, different yep. things and doing that over. Also, what's the one big piece of advice you would give to people? I think this is such in a great time to figure out what you want to do to care for yourself going forward. So if we know we have to create a great foundation to prevent this, because unfortunately, most of the scientists are telling us this is going to come back at some point. We don't know when. We don't know. It could be five years from now. could be five months from now. I have no idea. But we should use this time to improve our own health. And we know that if we eat well, if we move, that doesn't mean you have to go to the gym for an hour a day and sweat. It means right. we have to move. If we take good care of ourselves with sleep, which is absolutely critical, right. and we use supplements judiciously. I don't recommend supplements for everybody, but mm -hmm. we should pick, I think, one thing right now that you want, you've always thought about or you've thought about for a long time that you should improve and just begin making those changes in this time. And what happens is, if we have an altered environment and we start to make some changes, they often stick and then we bring them back with us when we head into the real world. Right, and if you're at home now, you might have the time to work on an exercise plan, even if it's right. walking around your backyard, up and down the drive. I know that's where I am at still Right. Um, to do, but you have a little bit more time, even though the grocery store is challenging, you have enough time to plan that out, look up yep. new recipes. And I read recently, um, good proteins, good carbs, the veggies, and, and stay away from all sugars, which we know in cancer and other things just like builds it up. So yeah. it is a good time to rethink that. Um, My easiest recommendation for food is you can eat anything that you want, but you have to eat a fruit or vegetable with it. So you want a Snickers? Great, have a Snickers, but you have to have carrots with it. <laughs> You want ice cream? Go ahead, eat your ice cream, but you have to put real fruit on it, not strawberry sauce, strawberries, you know? So it's an easy rule. And right. um, my kids will tell you that they're like, all right, I'll have cereal, but I got to find a fruit or vegetable because mom's coming down and I'm eating breakfast or whatever. So it's, it's an easy rule. It's an easy way to begin. And I remember once you told me um, no meat before six. Yeah, so that's one. So vegan before six is one way that some people are helping get more fruits and vegetables into their diet and also have a more environmentally sustainable approach right. to their health. You know, the easiest meal to, to cook meat for is dinner. It's way simpler and way quicker than a lot of other right. things. So that's we default to that. But I don't miss meat at lunch or breakfast. Yeah. So I kind of like my meat at dinner time, I have to say. But the yeah, other but that's okay. Is, I'm happy with a egg salad sandwich or right. oatmeal in the morning. So there's lots of alternatives for the exactly. other. Exactly. Yeah. Just easier well, to implement. Um, our time's up. I want to thank you for coming my on uh, on the porch. It's been great to have you. And thank you for the work you're doing because you're on the front line um, taking care of people. Um, and I know you and I know it's very fulfilling for you. Um, and it's your mission, but stay safe too. Thank you, Jane. I'm lucky to be doing it and we are lucky to have you. Well, I'm lucky to have you. So thank you, Kathy. Take good care. Mm -hmm.